What's up between your heads? It's day five here at the Connecticut Open. We have Gurgis and Makarova playing right now. We have Sabalenka playing Benchich. Uh, expect a lot of emotion in that match because that's going to be a screamer. Mm, bad joke. Uh, but then we have Garcia playing Puig and then Carlos Suarez Navarro playing Kvitova at the end. And then we have doubles going on as well. So hopefully we get to see more Burtons as well with her stuff and with her talent. So much description. I'm really bad at this. But um, let's just get straight into it. Maybe we can find some other stuff to do as well. I'm going to start the day. Here we go. especially when you kind of flick your wrist at the end. Did you develop that at a young age or is that something that you grew into or something you just felt comfortable with? Um, I always had a yeah, pretty loose wrist to con um, really control some spin and some variety on the balls, but obviously you need to train that a little <laughs> bit. And um, no, we did work a lot on my serve in the last three years and I think it improved a lot also speed wise and um, the variation I can put on the ball, it's very important to really um, not only serving the same balls to the returner, I think it makes it a bit yeah, difficult for, for the return player to really read my game, my serve, and um, yeah, sometimes it's nice to get some free points as well. <laughs> Thank you. Lunchy burger come with fries? It's six dollars for fries. Jesus. Yeah, you know all the prices are jacked up here everywhere. Oh, of course it is. You gotta cover, you gotta pay the open, the venue, and us. Uh, this makes my day worse. Can I get the munchie burger then with no pickles? What's some of the things that you see as tournament directors that you didn't really notice as a player while running a tournament versus like experiencing it? All the things that go into it behind the scenes, all the moving parts, um, you know, just scheduling alone or looking into wild cards. I mean, it's, it's you know, making, making sure that it's a great fan experience, you know, mm -hmm. all the sponsors are happy, that the fans come in, you know, it's like, you know, walking around the facility, making sure everything is, is, is on top of the game, you know, just to give everybody that is involved just the best time that there is, because in the end of the day, they're paying a lot of money to come and, and watch great tennis, but there's just so many things behind the scenes that, you know, I think, Looking back, I would have done it, or would have liked to have done it earlier. And some players, mm -hmm. sometimes I think, don't really understand what it takes to really have a great event. And if it's, you know, it goes over long periods of time, and there is, you know, this whole thing with, you know, weather. If it starts raining, you know, I mean, everything is just upside down. So, <laughs> luckily in New Worlds, you know, so far we've been uh, blessed with that. But um, no, it's just uh, the behind the scenes things. That's actually, I'm coaching a little bit as well now. So it's like even seeing that side of you know what a coach is going through thinking trying to tell his player it's like you know i'm trying to tell my player i need more feedback give me something you know i can work with so it's a lot of these uh, things that you didn't really take a look at because when you are a player mainly you're very selfish and all you want is uh, what's best for you and everybody around you is working for you and uh, you know you don't really see many other things which there's not really much time for it anyway anymore because you have to be um, on top of your game and as, as james just said Sometimes, you know, when you go out there and you just hit some balls down the middle and you still feel like, oh, my back and my phone is still pretty good. I could maybe go out there. It's like as soon as you start playing for over half an hour, 45 minutes at a very high level, you realize, okay, there's no chance because physically I just can't do it. And these guys are hitting bigger and they're stronger. 
and you know you play for one hour at this high level I need four days of vacation <laughs> you know, it's like I don't need the you know, I need a massage table for four hours every day but so that's that's having said that but uh, it's um, it's just fun you know being yeah. being able to uh, to experience um, you know all the sides that comes with tennis Thank you. being a kid from Fairfield you've been an idol of mine for some time and um, for kids that have been growing up in Fairfield especially, what's like the journey that you had? How did you kind of get out of Connecticut and kind of expand your horizons into the professional game? Well, I mean, luckily enough, I wasn't looking to, to necessarily get out of Fairfield. Fairfield is a, I had a great experience. I had a great childhood growing up there. Um, and for me to inspire kids there and to come and play this close to home and play at the US Open so close to home um, has always been such a joy for me. Um, but for kids that, if they're playing tennis, it's very often looked at a place you can't be successful. Uh, you need to go down to Florida to an academy. You need to go out to California for an academy or Texas. But it, it's possible here because it, it just takes it takes a lot more effort. I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder wanting to beat all those players that went to the academies and say, hey, I can do it here. I can just get up early. And, and that's the only time there's court time indoors in the winter. Yeah. Get up early and play before school, right after school, late at night, whenever you need to play. And just making the best of it. So. Uh, my goal was to be as successful as I could be in tennis and show that it's possible out of Connecticut, out of an area where it's not exactly a hotbed of, mm -hmm. of um, talent and other players on tour. And, uh, I was able to do that, so if, if there's any kids from Fairfield that are tennis players, just know that it's possible. Mm -hmm. um, know that there's um, it, there may be some obstacles, but those obstacles, in my opinion, make you stronger. The yeah. way that you're able to do it, if you're able to have a little bit of success out of the, with these obstacles, it's going to make it easier once you have the access to other facilities, to better uh, temperatures, to, to um, yeah. you know, better training conditions. So. Um, yeah, keep working hard, and it's uh, it's a lot more fun when you overcome some obstacles, and you, you appreciate it more when you get to uh, to where your your goals are. Thank you. That was actually a really cool experience to talk to Tommy Haas and James Blake. I've been waiting to ask James Blake that specific question for almost my entire life now, and being able to ask him that question in this environment at the Connecticut Open has kind of it. It's very nostalgic and it's very humbling to listen to someone that I've wanted to talk to, wanted to grow up and be when I was a kid. Uh, it's very. I'm very thankful for that opportunity. I just wanted to share that opportunity with you guys to see how these former pros react and how they act with the media, how they answer a question, how they hold themselves now, now that they're in retirement and have another uh, career ahead of them, especially being tour tournament directors. And I think that's something really cool to be a part of and something to really think about, especially after players are done playing tennis. It's awesome, I love it. And I hope you guys are enjoying that as well. Do you consider yourself a perfectionist on court? Sorry? A perfectionist. Do you consider yourself a perfectionist? Like you can't make any mistakes yeah. on court? Or? Well, no. Everyone <laughs> makes some mistakes and you just have to, to keep going. It doesn't matter what you do. Mm -hmm. It's like, like that person, I've heard for one, two, three, that person said, oh, I couldn't say it. So even if this is like a stupid mistake, so you have yeah. to keep going and just like don't care about anything. Mm -hmm. Everyone is missing. Do you like roller coasters? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh wow. Tap to dismiss this notification. How do I. What?
So thanks so much guys for tuning in to today's vlog. I had a lot of fun interviewing tons of different players and seeing these uh, action-packed day. Um, Kvitova just retired though, which is kind of sad because now Gurgis is the only seeded player left in the tournament. But tomorrow should be both semifinals. We'll get to see the doubles final as well. And hopefully we'll get to see a lot more. Make sure to check us out on all our social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure to check out all those when you have the chance. Make sure to check us out on our website as well at tweenerheadtennis.com for t-shirts, stickers, and all the behind the scenes commentary that we're writing about as well. And make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Leave a, leave a comment below as well. Thanks guys, see you tomorrow.